everybody, welcome back. My name is Dr. Erica Barron and this is our head technician here at NovaCat Clinic, Helen Carroza. And we're going to chat with you about cats. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below this video. Um, and we'll try to do our best to answer them. We might just look at each other and say, it's gotta go to the vet, but we'll do our best. Today, we're going to talk to you about National Feral Cat Day. We're not going to be able to have a coffee talk next week because Ellen is going to the American Association of Feline Practitioners meeting and she's presenting, which is quite exciting. Um, and she's gonna rock it. She's gonna talk about pediatrics because that's what she does, yep. a lot of. In case you don't know Ellen, she's actually a mother of kittens. Um, so she's going to talk to the people about that, but we thought it would be a good time for us to talk to you about feral cats since we won't be here next week to do that. So Ellen, why don't you explain to everybody what a feral cat is? A feral cat technically is an outdoor cat that you cannot handle. You can have an outdoor friendly cat. That is not a feral cat. The feral cat truly does not want to be handled by a human being. They will share the same space as you. They will accept food from you. They will accept shelter from you. But they do have a very set boundary that they want you to respect. Yes, that's that's a great way to explain because I think a lot of people get confused between what an outdoor cat is and what a feral cat is. And an outdoor cat can be a feral cat, but it doesn't have to be, as Ellen described. Uh, let's see, what else should we talk about while we're on that subject? Um, what do you think is one of the biggest things the community has to be careful of with feral cats when they're in their environment and they're like right outside and maybe they start feeding a colony of feral cats? Well, one of the main things you have to make sure is, are they part of a TNR colony, which means trap, neuter, return? And these cats, you can tell they're from a trap, neuter, return program by them usually missing a quarter portion of their left ear. Some communities will do the right ear, but it's normally the left ear. So you can actually observe this cat from a distance, and you know that cat has received a rabies vaccine, they're spayed or neutered, um, they most likely have a microchip. A lot of the rescue groups now are microchipping these cats so they can keep track of them. So just in case someone decides that they're going to take one of these outdoor feral cats mm -hmm. to the shelter, the shelter can go ahead and Here's scan microchip. them for that microchip, call that certain rescue group so they can get that cat back out where he belongs. Other issues that people usually wind up um, being concerned about, not only having too many cats to suddenly show up and feed, is disease mm -hmm. and usually the one of the biggest issues is rabies yeah we talked about that last time so check that video out right. but if you see a cat outside you don't need to touch it no. don't touch it there's no reason <laughs> for that there's a whole list that the AVMA had of a bunch of different diseases so I'll just go into these real fast of course the one that everyone is the most scared of is rabies because it's deadly and fatal and it's bad depending on where you live in the country we still have the plague here. And yeah. guess who likes to spread around? It's cats. Um, those are some of the reasons you don't always go to the Southwest, or at least that might be maybe part of the reason I don't. <laughs> I don't work there. Um, so you have to be careful with your cinia. Um, also, tularemia is something you have to worry about. I usually think of that in rabbits, but you know, I rabbits. Explain what tularemia is. <sighs> Whenever I think of tularemia, I was actually exposed to tularemia in vet school, and it was a little bit scary. But it's okay because we had a mask on and I guess it happens about every other year. What happens is you open up the patient and it looks like there's no blood in the kidneys. They're pale. There's no reason there should never be blood in the kidneys. That is so scary. So um, of course it was in the pathology lab. Um, tularemia is something extremely bad. It is extremely deadly. Um, there are very few people who live to tell the tale um, when they have get it. Um, it can cause abscesses through the body and the lungs um, and it's very, very necrotoxic. So it's something that's very, very bad. So don't touch feral cats. And how do feral cats get it? Um, they usually, they can get it from a couple ways. They can get it from the soil. They can get it from rabbits or rabbit poop. Um, they can get it from each other. So don't touch feral cats. I feel like that's sort of like the hashtag Respect for national. Your space. Yes, the hashtag for <laughs> national feral cat day is hash, the hashtag feral cat day. I also feel like it should be like hashtag don't touch feral cats. There's no reason. 
Um, other things we worry about are Campylobacter, which is a bacterial thing that causes you to have really bad GI issues. Bartonella. Bartonella is awful if you truly get hemobartonella. It can be very difficult to diagnose. Yep. And I feel like, even though it's not like Lyme disease, I feel like most people would think that you behave like you have Lyme disease. Right. It's sort of like this thing that you just don't feel well, and it comes and goes, and it's hard to diagnose. Sometimes your gums have issues. It can have upper respiratory components. It's not good. It's difficult to diagnose. It's not easy to treat. I feel like actually one of the best ways to treat it, and with Lyme disease, mm -hmm. is to have a holistic component to your treatment as well. Now, what's the common name for it that people would actually recognize? Oh, that cat's name? crash fever. <laughs> I was thinking that in my head, too. Um, other things that you need to worry about from feral cats. Ringworm. Yeah. That's not fun. Um, and then there's also all of the parasitic components, like Cryptococcus, Toxicara, um, other types of parasitic worms, uh, Chylotiala, which are like walking mites. Those are super itchy. You don't want those. And then, of course, Toxoplasmosis, which we had a talk on. Feel free to listen to it. I've never been exposed. My OBs always want to retest me, um, but you can really only be exposed if you're around cat feces and has time to sporulate, etc. And you can get it from feral cats because they're stressed out because they don't want you near them and their poop's right there and they are in the garden and you can be exposed that way. So mm -hmm. I feel like one of the top ways to get exposed to toxoplasmosis, besides for raw meat handling and not having good hygiene with that, is if you're playing with feral cats. So that's another reason you shouldn't play with feral cats. You can feed them, you can give them shelter, you can, you know, do lots of things to help their environment and help them be happy. You can catch them in traps and get them neutered or spay and get them their vaccines and maybe put a flea treatment on them while they're in the house or, or at the vet clinic. And then you take them back outside and you don't touch them. They don't want to be touched. They just want to kill your mice and rats for you, which is very, very nice. And sometimes I feel like we need more of them in Georgetown. <laughs> right. And unfortunately, there is the, um, the I guess it's the National Audubon Society, yeah. that they're always like, these cats are the number one issue for all of these birds disappearing. We kind of don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, it might be true. It might be a contributor. But a lot of these, these colonies that are taken care of, they know when their next meal is going to be because they're going to come see Barbara or Joe walking up with all the cans of food and the bags and everything. And they know their next meal is going to be there. Um, a lot of times with the bird societies, they just think that cats enjoy killing for fun. And yes, some do. It's environmental enrichment. And they're natural predators. Of course they like to kill right. things. And, you know, you wind up with an issue with that as well. Yes. Um, unfortunately. But they usually don't do it for food because they know when their next meal is going to be. If it's a good feral cat community. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are terrific and they take care of these feral cat populations and they feed them. And if they look at one of the cats and they're like, you look like you've been losing a lot of weight. Something's yeah. wrong. They'll catch them. They'll bring them in. We'll sedate them. Nobody touches them while they're awake because there's two things feral cats do. They go into either fight or flight. And they are really good at flight. They they're are. so good at flight. Or they have the ones that are in the trap that just accept their fate and they and just like, sedate them and they think that they're going to wake up in heaven and they don't. They wake up back in the trap and they go back outside. We even used to have one um, here in Arlington at the um, country club. They used to come and get her groomed twice a year because she was a long-haired cat and they couldn't brush her. So twice a year she would come in and get a clown cut so they could make sure that she stayed comfortable when she was a feral cat. I mean, that is, that's part of the reasons we don't have nice blinds here because <laughs> there's been feral cats in our room. And, and we have plastic, we have plexiglass windows. We don't have actual windows because there's been feral cats in our room. Yep. Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, so, according to um, all of the trap neuter return or trap neuter release places, uh, the best things to do about Feral Cat Day are to use the hashtag Feral Cat Day. Uh, you can always organize a commute and supplies for people who are feeding them. And then another thing you could do is, is you could volunteer with a shelter or um, one of the Feral Cat communities and see if they need anything. I'm sure they could always use help with all of their feral yeah. cats. They sure can. And a lot of the shelters will have their own trap meter return program. And they're always either needing to set out traps 
or have traps checked so they can bring these cats in for the proper medical treatment that they do need. And I bet another thing that would be really nice is if people purchased and donated would also have an Instagram group. And we're really nice. I hope we're nice. We're back on Facebook. Okay, hi everybody. I just want to remind you um, that we're on Instagram and we're on Facebook and we're really nice. Um, and we're also having a photo contest, and in case you didn't get the memos uh, for the last couple of years, we're moving, yeah. and we're almost there. We've been trying to move for a while now. A really long time, and we're really almost there. But since it's almost Halloween, and we love cats, and we think they're so great, we decided that we're going to have a cat photo contest with a costume. So consider putting your kitty cat in a cute or spooky costume, and sending it over to us. Um, you could submit it on Facebook or on Instagram. If you do both, then you could be entered for a very special raffle of a gift basket. Um, and we're doing this until the 18th. The person who wins will get $100 in clinic services and your cat will go on the wall in our new clinic. Yay, the wall It'll be game. epic. It'll be epic. I really think there's a picture of Ira and of, um, George Gardner, and it's the best picture of all time, and I think we need to put that up somewhere, too. And I'm okay with putting that picture up instead of putting up the picture of my cat, Cosmo. Because I really thought Cosmo should go up on the wall, but this picture's epic, and everyone should enjoy it. <laughs> so submit your pictures. We want to see your cats and their awesome costumes, and we want to be sure to make sure your kitty cats have an awesome Halloween. Does anybody have any questions today? No? Okay. Well, everybody is so excited about National Girl Cat Day, I, I know. And um, don't forget next week to send Ellen a special message because next week is National Vet Tech Appreciation Day. Ooh. And she won't be here, but we should make her feel loved. So feel well, you free have Sophie. To... Sophie's a, a technical yeah. student. Right. Well, we're <laughs> going to make her feel loved because she'll be here, but you won't be here. So no, I'll everybody... have the ice cream truck that comes around. Oh, yeah, you will. Oh, One I'm of sorry. the local hospitals in the area sends this ice cream truck around every year and every year I have to send somebody else outside to go get my ice cream for me because I can only watch through the window sad because busy. I'm upstairs too busy to do stuff. It's always because it's not on my day and we didn't cancel anything. It's usually on my day we cancel things. That's how it goes. Anyway, thanks for sharing this time with us. If you have any questions about cats, we're happy to answer them. If there's anything you would like us to speak on directly, feel free to let us know below this video. Um, and feel free to send us an email. Our email is office at novacatclinic.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if we can ever help your kitties, just let us know. It's really all we want to do is give cats for birthdays. That's what makes us happy. Thanks. Bye.